Morning everybody, welcome back to my gardening habit. Uh, today is the first day back from a 10 day vacation and we got a lot of work to do in the garden. There's a lot of stuff that uh, we tried to do our best to prep before we left and uh, we had some bad storms and a lot of rain so everything's a little overgrown. Uh, had, a, had a couple branches fall, not too bad doesn't seem to be too much damage but I'm gonna take a quick walk through and uh, check things out and see where we stand and I'm gonna try to start doing these like, like a weekly update um, as things are going on I just keep on forgetting to, to get out and do it so I'm gonna try to So before we left, we took all of our remaining seedlings and succulents and everything that was going to need to be watered and put it out here. We put everything on a timer to, to water everything two times a day and didn't really need it apparently because we got a lot of rain. So. Everything looks like it held up pretty good. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, little flowers that we started here. Um, not really sure what's what off the top of my head. We got some wandering Jews, some basil plants that we were starting, uh, some purple waffle, uh, a bunch more wandering Jews. You can see a bunch of variegated spider plants in the back there, some more purple waffle here in the front. Uh, along the back here you see a couple small Carolina Reaper seedlings. Our Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans are starting to do pretty good. Looks like they're trying to reach over here. I want to get them back going this way. We'll come back through later and do that. The tomato plants are got a little ahead of themselves. And they're down. We've got a bunch of different varieties going right now. This is a Beams Yellow Pear, a Cherry Roma, Aunt Ruby's German Green. Uh, we've got a Black Plum. These are some of my favorite tomatoes. Uh, and it looks like we've got a little blight going on, so I'm going to have to trim that off today. Definitely don't want to lose the whole plant. We got some coming in there. Good. And we have a gold metal tomato. And a canner howl. Let's see. Brandy wine. Got a little bit of blight on there. I'm gonna have to trim some off. I had already trimmed off a few leaves off of that one previously. And this is a Declan special. This is looks to be what would have been a super sweet hybrid. Uh, this is just a cherry tomato that Declan wanted to plant in the ground and see what came up. And so far, this is what we've got. We'll see what happens with these these little fruits, but. Could be cherry roma. Could be similar to the super sweet hybrid. I don't think that would produce the exact same thing though. I think it would just come up with some random cherry. Over here we have some more some more seedlings, some strawberry plants down the bottom here. Some more pepper plants. We got a couple habaneros. another Carolina Reaper. These are the world's hottest pepper. I grew these a few years back. Awesome little pepper to grow. Let me see some more succulents back there. Some 
variegated spider plants that we've been harvesting the little babies off of and then growing them up right, in our main raised bed we've got a lot going on here we've got some pepper plants we've got some Ozark Giants they seem to be doing pretty good these two are Ozark Giants these are lilac bell peppers these two here and I think that this is a Carolina Reaper here I don't have a label on it but I'm pretty certain it's a Carolina Reaper this tomato plant is an Aunt Ruby's German Green that had fallen off the table and I was I was repotting everything one day a strong wind came in the plant came off the table and it snapped right at the top of the, the grow stem and luckily there was a sucker below it and that was able to take off so I took the piece that was broken off it was probably about six inches long and I rerouted that in the aquaponics and this is what we have here now from that Aunt Ruby's German Green that's a pretty healthy looking plant you can see once I had rooted that in the aquaponics you can see all the all the extra roots that were coming off of that let's go back over here first so we have some beets uh, sorry diamond eggplant here they were some seed savers exchange seeds from a few years back that seem to be doing well we have uh, chioga beets and golden beets here I'm not really sure where we stand with them. I've seen other people online that have been uh, harvesting beets already. I have never had any success with beets. Just the fact that I have a bunch of greens here is success for me so far with beets. The closest thing to success, I guess. So, I don't know. I think I have them in a little bit too too tight. That could be an issue. Maybe I'll try to thin some of them out today. Over here we have carrots, kaleidoscope carrots. And again, I've had very limited experience with carrots. Uh, these were actually off of a carrot seed tape that I got from, I believe Burpee was the company. And I got that at the Lowe's Home Improvement Center. This guy here is going to, you can see he's getting ready, he's bolting, he's going to seed. You have a bunch of little baby flowers starting up here that are going to eventually produce some carrot seeds. So if this was a good carrot, I would say that it would be a good idea to leave that, but I don't think it's a very good carrot. So we're going to pull it. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's not, not really filling out like I had hoped. And that may be, I don't know. I had, again, this is the first attempt at carrots in this new bed. And I'm not really sure, you know, all that much about carrots. I'm not, not very experienced with them, so. I got some research to do. There may be soil deficiency here. Uh, this was, uh, if you remember from one of my other videos, this was a big load of leaf mulch, leaf compost from the township that I just loaded up in here. And I never got it tested. I really don't know what, what it looks like. It was the first year with it, so who knows? might just not be getting what what it actually needs to grow but I'm gonna do some research to that and yeah try to become a little bit more knowledgeable about growing carrots 
and what they need and what to do. So the whole thing with gardening is it is a learning experience. You never, it's never mastered. This is a nice little surprise. These here are turnips and as a, they were not this big when I left for vacation. So this is pretty cool. That looks like a giant turnip right there. There's a couple more. You can see the bases on these other ones. So I just got two rows of them. And I got some cabbage here that I've never grown cabbage successfully. This is again similar to the beets. Uh, a new thing for me. It seems like they were doing great. Kind of seems like these leaves are turning in on each other. Maybe they're going to form a head. I don't know. Uh, some more research to do on that. Our lettuce patch here. We have harvested a bunch of harvested a bunch of lettuce out of here uh, for our own personal use and also for the local garden share that we started. And it's still doing pretty good. I'm going to come back through today and trim a whole bunch out and wash it up, give it away. You can see over here, some of this is starting to bolt. So, now when the lettuce bolts like this, you just get this stem coming up and it's trying to get up as high as it can and it's gonna produce. All right, so this is the bed that I planted, that I built and planted just a little while before vacation. Um, right before vacation, we had an amazing little crop of spinach. And I meant to have spinach for dinner the night before we left. We did not. So, first night back tonight, we're going to harvest some of this and eat it. Um, I see that some of these are starting to bolt. This is my first year successfully growing spinach. So this is amazing. This looks like a bunch of little flowers along the stem instead of one big butted top. I could be wrong about that though. I'm gonna have to look that up. But it looks like, looks like a bunch of little flowers. There's a bunch of little leaves in there. Now, I know with lettuce, when it bolts, you'll actually get uh, a much bitter, much more bitter taste out of the leaves. Not really sure with spinach. Um, I had nibbled on a couple of these before, but uh, not sure. Mm. Not too bad. Let's see, we're going to probably saute a bunch of this up tonight. We got a couple, a couple weeds hiding out in here, but we did a, a fairly decent weeding before we left, so they aren't too bad. And over here we've got some onions that seem to be doing much better than those ones in the pots out back. Now, the ones in the pots out back also have the same... Uh, same township uh, compost, the leaf compost mix. Out there though, I ended up, uh, I threw some wood ash on top. We always have an abundance of that because we heat the house with wood. Um, I threw some wood ash on them. I believe I'd seen a video before saying that wood ash was good for it. Maybe not, I don't know. Uh, it probably has to do with obviously the, the soil composition and I have never gotten that checked. I need to start reaching out to uh, my master gardeners at the Rutgers Extension office and see what my soil profiles are like. But these seem to be doing pretty good. I don't want to poke around too much. Um, I'm hoping that they'll start. I believe that once they're they're going to be ready. The bulb is going to start pushing up on the top. And I don't think that we're there yet. So some more research to do on onions uh, and pretty much everything. Here you see this little guy here. This is a weed. It's called purslane. 
and it grows wild but it is edible and you can eat it right off the right off the plant I like to throw it into salads nice little nice little leafy green flavor and lettuce um, I know that there's some benefits to that too um, I'll have to look them up but I I'm not sure if that's the one there's one that has a uh, high omega-3 content but I'll look that up and I'll post it in the video here is more rainbow chard um, again this is the first time I'm growing it this year and it seems to be doing pretty good I think I left these a little bit too tight in here uh, I probably could have separated them out a little bit more but I get a little overzealous with how many how many plants I can fit in one area I like to maximize uh, my grow space but they all seem to be doing pretty good I'm gonna thin some out today and offer it up on the garden share and see what we do see who wants some I'm sure it's pretty good so yeah I'm gonna give a bunch of this away on the garden share and hopefully people pick it up I've been trying to offer as much stuff up as I can uh, here we have some Beauregard sweet potatoes I got these from Stark Brothers uh, starkbros.com and they I don't know how they're gonna grow in here this is my first time growing them in this leaf compost we grew them at our last house in basically just regular old topsoil you know just tilled up some some soil and planted them in and they did pretty good um, the tubers weren't exactly uh, giant but they did pretty good I was very happy with them they were very delicious um, so I'm hoping for another good crop of them this year hopefully our soil content here is a little bit better and you know we get some some more out of it but we get what we get and we don't get upset over here cabbage I've got cabbage worms for sure unless this is just Swiss cabbage but I'm pretty sure I got cabbage worms so I don't know what to do about this oh there we go we got one of them there so that guy I'll have to look them up and identify it but I believe that that's our little cabbage worm so I'm not sure if the preferred method is to go through here and pick them all off or to spray the plant um, I've used eco smart organic garden spray in the past which is a bunch of peppermint oil and other natural oils that are supposed to uh, kill or deter pests but not hurt the garden or anybody that's eating it so I'm gonna try that well I'll look it up first obviously and then I'm gonna try that I think that these plants are trashed which I'm not happy about because they were looking pretty good and it actually looks like we were starting to form some little heads on here but this stuff happens um, this is how we learn you learn in the garden through total failure and that's definitely what I have going on here with the cabbage so at least I got to get a look see at them uh, maybe I'll pull a couple off later and put them under the microscope and get a better look at them I'll post them in the video or I'll make another little video of it later or something I don't know so I've got that to do I've got some more Utah tall celery here it's doing eh, doesn't seem to be doing as good it seems to have some dead leaves on it some browning leaves again not too familiar with celery so I don't don't really know too much about it what I gotta do but I'm gonna look that up and here I'm very happy about this 
This is so far the only one that I can find that actually came up. Maybe this is one too. Um, this is horseradish that I ordered from Stark Bros. And looks to be doing pretty good. So I planted six, six of them. And again, this this very well could be another piece. I think it might be. I don't know. These guns, these guys have like these little serrated edges. And these ones don't. So I don't know. All right, so this is a section of the garden out front of the house that we really haven't done too much with yet. Just kind of been adding a little bit to it. We've got some creeping Jenny over here. Um, hasn't really done as well over here as it has in other areas. Uh, get some wood sorrel, wood sorrel here. No, it looks like clover, but it's actually wood sorrel. And this, it's just a weed. You can find it all over the place. Um, it actually has a lemon zest flavor to it. Well, very mild bitter. Delicious little thing. You can add that into salads. Um, I don't, but I should. <laughs> uh, you got broadleaf sage here. First year growing sage and this stuff seems to be doing very well. Most of the time this bed uh, only gets a little bit of water. We set it up on automatic water for our vacation and these are doing pretty well, it seems. I'm crushing it up, it's got a nice, nice aroma to it. Should make for uh, some pretty good spices to save or maybe even uh, save it and dry it out and burn it to keep the evil spirits away you know stuff like that um, this here is dragon's blood um, not too well versed on it but it's a spreading I believe it's a succulent type plant and you'll see each little guy here can sprout out a bunch of little roots. I think I pulled it a little too high, but I'm trying to propagate some more of that right now. See if we can get that going. But we have chicks and hens over here. Right before vacation, I broke off a couple of these, trying to propagate some more. Some more dragon's blood. Uh, this stuff. I, I'm still learning about it, but I know that later in the season, if conditions are right, you'll see that these nice green leaves will turn a deep uh, red, sometimes purple. You can see edges on these ones starting to turn, maybe. Um, but when they're, they're actually red, it's where they get their name Dragon's Blood from. It, it's really beautiful. Not that the green isn't beautiful. I do like this plant, but over in this open space here, uh, this is an area where I planted horseradish, and it has not come up yet. So we have some grass here, some ornamental grass. I'm not really sure what it is. It's definitely not like a lemongrass or anything like that. Uh, Probably like a variegated elephant grass or something like that. I gotta try to look it up and identify it. We have some lilies here, some nice yellow lilies. I'm not sure what uh, specific uh, variety, but more to look up. Here we got some catnip that not doing all that great. I trimmed it back a little bit hoping that that would produce some growth. It seems to be. Got some smaller stems over here. It's my first year actually growing catnip. Not really sure how well it's going to go. I should probably trim these seeds off here. These flowers before they before the plant thinks it's done. Um, 
I believe it it's in the mint family and like mint from what I understand if you top it it'll just keep on spreading mint will spread on its own without topping it but if you top it you don't get the the nasty woody stem on it and it just continues to have a nice low spread and this mint is doing great I bought this last year on clearance at the Walmarts um, it was just a teeny tiny plant with a couple couple stalks I actually buried it in the pot in leaves over the winter and as soon as the ground was tillable I just worked it in here and it's doing great it took off from like one little spot right here it is now all over here just want to say thanks everybody for checking out the video uh, taking a walk through the garden with me uh, I'm gonna try to do these walkthroughs a little bit more often maybe once a week maybe not uh, can't promise anything I'm gonna try to do it once a week I'm trying to get the website uh, updated we I totally scrapped the old layout that I had going on and I'm going back to uh, a different layout that I initially started with um, I'm really excited about what we're gonna do there uh, more to come on that but I'm working on it uh, I'm gonna start trying to put out a few more videos uh, I've got some stuff in the works and yeah we're just gonna keep moving this thing along so thanks again for watching uh, if you can uh, hit the like button if you're in the YouTube app please hit subscribe and if you can share it uh, leave a comment let me know uh, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see more of. And uh, thanks. Take care.